why so many of us don't lose weight when we exercise. Are you exercising to lose weight? Here's why that probably will not work. People hoping to lose weight with exercise often wind up being their own worst enemies, according to the latest large-scale study of workouts, weight loss, and their frustrating interaction. The study, which carefully tracked how much people ate and moved after starting to exercise, found that many of them failed to lose, or they even gained weight while exercising. But a few people in the study did drop pounds, and their success could have lessons for the rest of us. Physical activity consumes calories, and if we burn calories without replacing them or reducing our overall energy expenditure, we enter negative energy balance. In that condition, we utilize our internal energy stores, which most of us would call our flab or our fat, and then we shed weight. But human metabolisms are not always pleasant. And multiple past studies have shown that most men and women who begin new exercise routines drop only about 30 to 40% as much weight as would be expected, given how many additional calories they are expending with exercise. Why exercise underwhelms for weight reduction remains an open question though. Scientists studying the issue agree that most of us compensate for the calories lost to exercise by eating more, moving less, or both. Our resting metabolic rate may also decline if we start to lose pounds. All of this shifts us back towards positive energy balance, otherwise known as weight gain. So here are six sneaky reasons you are not losing weight. One, you're not drinking enough water. We've all heard how important water is when it comes to shedding pounds. It helps to suppress appetite so you're less likely to overeat. But that's not all. When you're dehydrated, your kidneys can't function properly, so the body turns to the liver for additional support. Because the liver is working so hard, more of the fat you consume is stored rather than burned off. Just how much water should you be drinking? About one half of your body weight in ounces every day, especially if you're exercising. If you're one to consume an aggressive amount of fiber, an additional 8 to 16 ounces of water per day is a good idea. Just be warned, that amount of liquid at each meal minimum requires serious effort and will turn you into a peeing machine. Number two, you skim on protein. Several studies show that high protein diets result in more pounds shed, at least initially. That's because protein enhances the feeling of satiety and prevents you from losing muscle as you lose fat. You also have dietary thermogenesis, which is the energy you burn to process and use the food you eat. Your body expands more energy to metabolize protein than carbs or fat, so higher protein diets make you burn slightly more calories. So how much protein do I need per day? It really depends on your weight, but most women should get 40 to 80 grams. And to accomplish that, you could have a Greek yogurt, which is 18 grams, a couple of eggs, 13 grams, or a few ounces of lean poultry or fish, 25 or 22 grams, or perhaps a heaping helping of black beans, which is 15 grams, or lentils, which is 18. Number three, you sit at a desk all day. If you're only working out one hour a day, and outside of that, you're mostly spent sitting in front of a computer, this could be one of the reasons why working out is not leading you to losing weight. Much to the dismay, research finds that dedicated workouts simply can't compensate for being sedentary the rest of the time. According to one University of Missouri Columbia study, sitting for just a few hours causes your body to stop making a fat inhibiting enzyme called lipase. Getting up and walking for just two minutes during each of those hours burns an additional 59 calories a day, according to research. Number four, your numbers are off. I've always considered myself math whiz, so I assumed that I had the whole calories in, calories out formula down. Yet, I was consistently working out and not losing weight. So here's how I determined how many calories I should eat per day. I got my basal metabolic rate, my BMR, or the number of calories I need to maintain my weight. To do this, I used an online calculator, and I entered moderate for my activity level because I do exercise regularly. That gave me about 2,400 calories a day. I then added whatever calories I burned during my workouts, typically around 500, 
And then that meant I could eat almost 3,000 calories a day without gaining a pound, or nearly 2,500 calories a day to lose a pound a week. Sure, it seemed high, but I had used a calculator, and so therefore I thought it had to be right. Not so fast. The BMR calculator already factors in the calories you burn with your workouts, so you should not add them in again. At this time, I thought my calorie needs were 500 calories higher than they really were. No wonder I was maintaining instead of losing. Reason number five. You work out regularly. People tend to eat more when they work out, either because they feel they've earned it or because they're overestimating how much they've burned, or perhaps both. This is especially true in the early stages of a fitness program when your body is getting used to the decrease in calories consumed and the increase in calories burned. Working out can also make you retain water. To ensure that you don't get dehydrated, the plasma in your bloodstream will store an extra two to four pounds of water. A professor of exercise science at Auburn University says you'll always carry that extra water unless you become inactive. It's not fat or muscle, but simply super hydration, which is a good thing. It's also a good thing to keep chugging water, which can counterintuitively help you minimize additional water retention. So the best advice is to stay active, stay well hydrated, and don't weigh yourself. Also, remember that exercise is more about overall fitness and health than weight. Yes, gaining muscle can make mean a shift on the scale, but that's a good thing and will lead you to being stronger and burning more fat over time. Lastly, number six, you are stressed. Much like the lab rats, humans who turn to comfort food tend to pack on the pounds when they're under duress. The stress hormone cortisol triggers the fight or flight response, which is an appetite stimulant. In addition, it steps up the production of certain brain chemicals, which increase cravings for carbohydrates. So there's actual science to support why you want to eat all the bread when you're super stressed. Even when you don't give in to cravings, stress can still stall a slowdown. Too much cortisol slows the metabolism. Even worse, excessive stress causes fat to be stored in the abdominal area, where weight is harder to lose. Luckily, a lot of things to whittle your middle should ease my angst. Exercise does reduce stress, and a social support network also helps. So does exercise help you lose weight? Since I've embarked on my journey, I've lost 12 pounds, a solid pound per week. I've also increased my water and protein intake, I move more throughout the day, and I'm trying to stress less. But one of the best things I've done is not weighing myself. In the beginning, I was tempted, but I stuck to avoiding my scale, and now I only weigh in weekly. At the end of the day, I know that if I'm creating a calorie deficit, no matter what the scale says, I'm making progress. So beyond the numbers, when the scale has burned you out, here are three other ways to gauge your progress. One, how do your clothes fit? Two, how do you feel? Three, how much can you do?